Hey guys, welcome back to Seat Story Cup number three. Artosis yeah. Crip and Raynad sitting here for our next match. It's going to be Vortex going up against Powder. Yeah. And uh, stuff. We got Raynad here. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think of the last doing? match? Yeah. Uh, I didn't enjoy it, but you know. No. It happens. Now, now before the match, um, Savi says he, he's he's seven zero against you. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, in, in like every, tournament, like right. So Savitz, Savitz, right? Savitz is like wow. In the old days of Hearthstone, he was like the player who would always have like either the best decks in the tournament and just win, or the worst decks by far and just O2 drop out. And I would only play him in the on his like winning days. Okay. So I think like almost all those losses were like tournaments he got really so far in. Or has won. he basically already won the tournament then? Mm, I don't know. I actually have no idea. This one okay. weird. But uh, <laughs> so I, I mean, I expected to lose going into it just because you know. Mm. That's that's how it works. Well, it was really close, and you did get pretty unlucky. <laughs> you expected to lose going in. That's not a good mindset. Yeah, but it's it's hard to yeah. Mm. yeah, I flipped a coin beforehand, called heads, got tails. That was that was that. <laughs> All right. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the last game is kind of frustrating because he's super convinced that that Paladin deck is good, and he's super convinced that it beats Flood Mage, both of which I wanted to like prove wrong because mm -hmm. I played a lot of like aggro Paladin in my life. I was I think it's kind of like a deck that uh, the only games I won were off Hobgoblin, mm -hmm. and I couldn't deal 30 damage otherwise. So it kind of sucks that like I mold my entire hand looking for one drops and Frostbolt because I play two Chow, two Mana Worm, two yeah. Frostbolt, and uh, yeah, 15 cards later I don't see one of those cards. It's uh, Hobgoblin lives 10 turns, you're not going to win. So yeah, it happens. Have you ever seen a 5-8 Jeeves before? Yep. <laughs> Was it Saviz? No, no, I mean, that's most uh, Hobgoblin lists play Wisp Jeeves. Almost okay. any class you put it in, you play those two. So that happens once in a while. Okay. I've, I've never seen a 5-8 Jeeves, so that mm. was the first Yeah, me. that was my first 5-8 Jeeves. It, I've it, definitely seen 3-6 Jeeves. 5 eight's large, those. yeah. Yeah, 5 eight's pretty big. Yeah. Uh. I had to play a 6-mana Mogri the Ogre. That wasn't <laughs> funny either. <laughs> uh, that know. was actually the no, first 5-mana Mogri. Kind of like, no, because... Uh, because I didn't draw any of the one drops, as I mentioned, I had uh, to float a mana on turn four. Oh, you did? And lost because of it, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's right. Well, who would you uh, rather play in that loser match out of these two? Is I don't know either of them. Uh, oh, you don't? Okay. You have a quarter on you? Because I lost mine. <laughs> a quarter? <laughs> Are you going to flip it? Yeah, it's Hearthstone, <laughs> it right? It's thematic. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. All right, well... Um, both these players do have some pretty impressive uh, tournament results, um, but uh, you know they're not really the, the players that people think of as like, oh, who's the best player in the world kind of deal. So they're still a little bit unknown as far as people are concerned, and uh, I think people are going to be pleasantly surprised in this matchup. Yeah, I think it should be a very good one. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm just excited to see what decks everyone's playing. I've, that's that's the exciting part. I have, I have never seen in. Vortex play personally, but I know his record is very good. Uh, I have seen Powder play. Um, he's played in quite a lot of terms off cast, actually, and... Uh, He's won a few of them, so I know he's uh, he's doing pretty well. Yeah, certainly. I uh, was just picked up by uh, Trig Esports, I believe. She's okay. picked up a bunch of good players across like every game, mm -hmm. pretty much. So that's kind of interesting. Um, yeah, but I, I just want to see what classes they haven't yet and whatnot. I think they're right now choosing their bands, so this shouldn't take too too long to get there. Do we get to see like the the classes and stuff? Because I was we, we kind of skipped well, over that Well, they pop up quick. on the they pop up on the screen. Okay. So we need to yeah, like, that's we either remember them on. or write them down mm -hmm. or something like that. Of course, uh, yeah. Uh, maybe we'll get it on a piece of paper from the admin or something like that. That would be great. Yeah, that'd be easy. So uh, I like having stuff done for me. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. it definitely helps. Yep. Uh, as soon as you have to do stuff for yourself as a commentator, your brain just kind of wanders. You're like, I don't know what's going on anymore. Yeah, all I do is talk about video games that I watch other people play, and don't play myself. Past that, that's, it's just too much work. That's been my uh, full time job for <laughs> um, like seven years. Wow. Yeah. Think mm -hmm. about that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, uh, what do you, what do you think about the format? You said it's a weird format, right, Ed? Yeah, so it's Conquest, which, you know, as we know, is a format uh, made by Blizzard because they, they didn't really like players' cool decks or well, the decks they're known for playing being banned out. You know, they want to showcase everything. So they were playing that format with bands thrown in for reasons. And, uh, of course, with new wings out. So, you know, if somebody mm -hmm. does make a cool deck with, like, all these new cards that no one can beat, you know, it's just, oh, don't get to watch that on stream. So I don't really like the ban part of it. I think it would be more interesting if we would, like, ban our own deck or just not have bans. 
Um, but uh, you mean like uh, and your own deck so going you into it, you're like, okay. this is the deck I won't use, yeah. right? So okay. like that's pretty interesting. So yeah. like uh, sure. the only change compared to normal conquest, I think, from like uh, perspective of what deck should I bring, uh, it seems to be there's like one more deck, which means that it's more likely that somebody will play some specific popular deck. Uh, like for example, like. Uh, you can build a strategy that's like, okay, I just want to beat Hunter. So yeah. if people are bringing four decks instead of three, there's a slightly higher chance they have Hunter than if it were just three decks because mm -hmm. sometimes Hunter's like the fourth deck someone would bring in Normal Conquest. So uh, other than that, there's really no difference from playing Normal Conquest in terms of what decks you bring. So I don't really know what's going to be popular. Um, every player I've talked to is playing different classes. I, think, I expect the only class to not be represented is Shaman. Mm -hmm. I was actually um, talking about that. I thought... Uh, <laughs> Because people talked about conquest being very similar to just ladder, where you just really don't know what's going on, and you just yeah, it's really not because you can't. Uh, yeah, how do I put it? I mean, maybe it is. I, it, honestly, no. Conquest hasn't exactly been figured out, but there are mm -hmm. certain decks that are definitely more prevalent, like Face Hunter, uh, Druid, Mech Mage, just more more aggressive decks, I guess. But that does sound a lot like ladder, so maybe you're right. Yeah, and Shaman is just a class that just doesn't have many bad matchups. Really? <laughs> you think so? Well, there are those decks with cards in them. I don't think it does too well against those. But okay. uh, if you dodge those... That's a great counterpoint right yeah. there. The decks with cards in them. Yeah. Holy crap. Uh, which is kind of funny, because last Seat Story Cup, Shaman was far and away the best deck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In fact, lots of people brought Shaman. Personally, I had like a 9-1 and one record with it last Seat Story Cup. Mm -hmm. I think Savitz had like 10-0 and 0 yeah. with... A slightly different version. I didn't yeah. really like the the two the card double changes. Yeah, it sounded like that. Nobody yeah. played it before. Nobody played it after. But uh. yeah, it's kind of funny like that. It, a shaman does pop up from time to time in dominant right. tournaments. Yeah, but I, I do feel like, even in rank though it does. Like I I I mostly just follow like Reddit and and you right. you, you see like you know I just I just did this with that could be the shaman as well. <laughs> control shaman and and I do run up against it. it doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, maybe it maybe it's good. I don't know. Uh, the the thing is it's um it plays a lot of reactive cards. Uh, inside a Shaman, you have to kind of draw them in the right order in order yeah. to win. Uh, your Hunter matchup is going to be bad pretty much always, unless you're playing like double heal bot plus other cards you don't want to play, like Zombie Chow. Vitality Totems. Vitality Totems, yeah. <laughs> and then even then, you lose to mid range, but you beat face sometimes if you draw stuff in the right order. So it, it's weird because you have to like warp your deck to beat Hunter. So that's kind of always going to be a bad matchup because you rather beat the other 90% of decks. And uh, well, if, well, if you, we have if a you ban just in this ban Hunter every time, oh. right, then you. Right, so then you have to ask yourself, what is this deck doing better than me playing Hunter myself, me playing Druid, me playing Priest, Warlock, Rogue? All those decks are so strong. Paladin. Warrior, Paladin. All the classes are so <laughs> strong right now that aren't okay. Shaman. That is, if, if this was a nine deck format where you had to play nine different classes, I would bring Shaman, though. Wow. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. Yeah. I don't know. You kind of convinced me before. I think I would just not register a Shaman deck. There are a couple, like, little... Uh, I have my doubts. Yeah. <laughs> like, a lot of times a class is strong because a couple of small interactions really work in its favor, but with Shaman, it's, like, the opposite of that. It's, like, it's a weak class to begin with, but then there's all these interactions that don't favor you. For example, uh, Zombie Chow, it's a card you kind of have to play because yeah. you can't just play six one-man removal spells anymore. The overload really wrecks you, and uh, Unbound isn't that good anymore. So, point is, you have to play Chow, but then if you play Zombie Chow against another deck that's playing Zombie Chow, they're almost always favored. Like, there are rogue decks that play Zombie Chow, you lose that trade. There are yeah. Druid decks that play Zombie Chow, you lose that trade. Yeah, yeah. There are Paladin decks that play Zombie Chow, which wreck you with Muster for battle, and you lose that trade. So your Zombie Chows lose every Zombie Chow fight. And all your totems get farmed, and yeah, you're just sad. So I don't know, maybe after Lava Shock, it'll be a little different. That maybe, card's pretty. Do you, really, do you think it will? I actually think Shaman is is like, it might be like the worst class right now. Right. But I still think it's like pretty close. Right. Yeah. Well, it actually is. You were talking and about how uh, over, like, uh, why did it, this just left my mind? What it's called when you lose your mana crystals? Overload. Yeah, overload. I'm like Overwatch. No, uh, Overload. You were talking about, but. For round of eight, we get the new Lava Shock. Do you think that yeah. could possibly change it at all? Yeah, no. I was saying, I, I think no. that doesn't change it. Right. Yeah, I oh, think okay. it's pretty weak. Uh, it's it's a thing, though, where you're right, Crip. Both classes are kind of close. It's a thing where Shaman is like a bunch of 40% matchups, and there are like a lot of classes that just have a bunch of 60% matchups. You used to say that a lot about Warrior. Right, uh, yeah. It, and it was like shitty. It, it straight up like never won a tournament mm. during that entire time for, for a good reason. Uh, right now, it actually has good matchups again. Um, does well against Rogue, does well against Face Hunter. Uh, so yeah, we're starting to see Grim Patron lists being popular. 
Yeah, it's yeah. wreaking havoc on the or Chinese ladder, I think, right now. Grim Patron Warrior. <laughs> Well, I had, I had some fun with the card. Yeah, I think I the card is pretty it, good. Quite a bit. Uh, the combo potentials is similar to Druid and Warrior. I think can be a little bit more defensive than Druid. So I think it can it can be a, a deck that can be refined into a very strong one. Mm -hmm. But I think it's still quite early stage right Definitely, now. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it got a couple of really strong cards in this uh, once all the wings are out. Mm -hmm. I want to see how good that four drop guy is. All right. So uh, it looks like we're just about ready here. Um... And I do have the bands and everything, guys. It's going to be, it looks like, uh, Powder's deck that is banned is going to be Warlock, and the deck banned for Vortex is going to be Druid. And that leaves us with Hunter, Mage, Pally for Vortex, and uh, Mage, Druid, Warrior for Powder. So there you have it. I remember none of that. I don't even know what I said. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> nice. They brought classes and stuff. Some of them are banned. Let's see what happens. Well, the ones are, are Hunter no one brought Warrior. Shaman. No one brought Shaman. And no one banned Shaman, so that's, that's good. That's tryhards. Well, it looks like it's Face Hunter versus Warrior, so I guess we know who won this one. Um, well, that's no, a no. pretty crappy hand, it's, though. It's honestly... This matchup is like it's favored for Warrior, but it's not as favored as he'd think. He just drew his best card, which is Taskmaster. Um, but, like, this matchup is very winnable for Hunter. Yeah, I would say it's only... Face like Hunter is... I feel like everything is pretty winnable for, for Face Hunter. Yeah, you're playing. You're playing mid range hunter, and we we were talking about it. We thought mid range hunter probably has a much better chance against warrior. Yeah. Um, but even that is still pretty close to fifty. Right. Yeah. It's like one's fifty fifty, one sixty forty. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Mid. I think mid range is just a lot better for this format. Uh, looking at it, it makes a lot of sense to just ban hunter because it's usually like the only aggressive deck people bring, and mech mage is very beatable for slower decks. So I was thinking, you know, people who let Hunter through are going to have a plan for it. So I might as well play mid-range. Oh, that's cool. Uh, I'm definitely happy I with like the that. deck. I like that. that was, that's really smart because we were talking earlier about how people might just prepare to make sure that they don't lose to an aggro Hunter deck. Right. There's a lot of small nuances in this matchup uh, when it comes to how you play it from the Hunter side. Personally, I'm a big fan of not attacking with Infiltrator turn two if you have it because it plays around Cruel Taskmaster very well. Because uh, their only other play is going to be Fiery War Axe or Armorsmith, none of which deal with the Infiltrator. So they play Armorsmith, you play Scientist, you kill their Armorsmith the next turn. Point is, it's much more awkward for them mana-wise to not be able to yeah. coin their 2-2. Two -two. Sure. Or, I mean, just play a turn 2. I think we're going to see a coin death bite here. I would imagine. <laughs> well, you, you, you have a operate. slow hand. <laughs> you have a slow hand. I think there's some chance you'd want to save the coin, but I think... I think there's not much reason to. No, I mean, if if he were to just armor up there when he could have played his weapon to kill Leok, I would be very, very surprised and disappointed. Yeah, all of a sudden, uh, you know, Warrior looks like he's in a pretty good spot. I would rather be Warrior here, I think, in the situation. That's an interesting play. To not play the juggler? Right. I don't understand that, because you kind of want to uh, empty your hand for these quick shots. Could he be playing Snake Traps or something? He could, he could, yeah. Maybe he's just trying to bait out the Despite attack. Yeah. But one Cruel Taskmaster has already played. There's not much that can be done about a 3-1 juggler. Okay, Armorsmith is a definitely solid draw. But now the Warrior's trying to decide, do I just play the Shield Slam as a drain life right now, or do I Armorsmith armor? Do I even attack Scientist? I think the best play is just Armorsmith armor, don't attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you can't attack it to you, then you just kill it with Despite for free. Armorsmith is uh, very strong with Sludge Belcher. Yeah, certainly. Oh, it goes for the attack, though. Yep. Uh, this does allow you to attack through an explosive trap the turn after without getting punished too badly. Uh, can you guys check over there what trap this actually is? Oh, oh I think we're going to see in a second. It's explosive. It's, it is yeah. because explosive is not playable. Yeah. It's all how we always had to check. Oh, that's so weird. What? What's the, so weird? the quick shots and the explosive in hand. That's, that's really <laughs> weird. That's right. Even drawing double quick shot kind of stops you from getting the draw on one of them. Uh, still think playing two is correct, though, always. In every version of Hunter. Mm -hmm. is, <laughs> uh, people just kind of parrot what some people's opinions are on some cards. And uh, there's like one article posted on quick shot where I think it was, I want to say it was Kibler. It might have been someone else, though, who said okay. the card's kind of like overrated. You probably shouldn't don't necessarily need to play two of it in every hunter deck, but I think that's just not the case. The card is just like, to not play two quick shot, it's like not playing two kill command, or it's not playing two bow. I think it's just not right. Okay. Mm. 
I quite like the card personally. I think I thought well, one was always an auto include, just on what it does, mm. and uh, two is probably good. But mm. the radar is some debatable. Good. Yeah. Imagine dark bomb in a class with this hero power. It's just it's gonna win you so many games. Like that warrior game I played today, I would have won if I drew one of my quick shots. Yeah, I would have had a really good chance. Mm -hmm. Well, that sludge belcher uh, is indeed pretty good here. <laughs> it's pretty annoying. Definitely the case. What do you think about explosive trap and just suicide the juggler? Uh, it's just not going to work at this level of play because then the warrior just doesn't attack. Mm -hmm. um, but it's. I think, yeah. I'd, yeah, just weapon and quick shot into this dude. Yeah. Or maybe it does work at this level of play, who knew? <laughs> I mean, he's gonna do it. It's not gonna work though. I don't think yeah. I'm kind I'm of interested sure. that he, he did it like this, but Huh. Right, because the only way you get punished by just not attacking into situations like that is if your opponent plays Unleash the Hound. And, I mean he's gonna still give you a ton of armor off his slime. And armor smith. So Yeah, I think Emperor's a little greedy, but still probably I think Emperor is like always the I right play. Yeah, I think Emperor is <laughs> actually quite nice. Uh, I don't see it as being too greedy. Next turn you can shield main, shield slam and armor. Yeah, it's not That's too greedy, crazy. but it's a little greedy. Because, yeah, sh sh I don't know, shield maiden into boom is just like a pretty, like, it's kind of impossible to lose there. But I guess there's really nothing a warrior can do to lose this game. Yeah, he's, uh, he's looking pretty strong. Well... <laughs> Connor has no clue what to Yeah, do. that's a pretty uh, wonky hand there to try to win this game with. Sorry, Vortex. <laughs> what if you... What if you owl the thing and then... Hit the thing with the thing and cast the thing on the thing? I was thinking like just a quick shot, quick shot face after silencing. I don't oh, know. Just go pure face? Yeah, you may as well. Every time I play Face Hunter against Tarzan, I just ignore Tarzan. Because it's like, as soon as you kill him, it's like you're going to lose. You wasted too much damage. I like it. Okay. I like it. Yeah, this place is solid. Oh, my God. Oh. Is that good? Yeah. Armed. It is. That's <laughs> so much armor. That is so much. The thing is, like, he's going to fill the board so much with, like, oh, really? Oh, I'm surprised he first. didn't play the Maiden first, yeah. I don't think it really matters, though. It's like one of those situations. I think I would just wait an next turn and just Dr. Boom it. I think the Boom Bots are probably just a liability. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because the, the Unleash things. And you can if you can get two armor off each Boom Bot, are you kidding? That's pretty crazy. Probably the only game with boombots are actually a li liability. Yeah. Other than that, I'd probably just want seven boombots yeah, on much. my board at all times. <laughs> seven boombots? Yeah. It's possible with Flood Mage, right? Yeah. Boombots everywhere? Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's a good time. For one player. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just like every good deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is a Misha off Animal Companion. We might, uh, might see a bit of delay between the next game in this one while Vortex submits a bug report. <laughs> I, I mean, this is like... It's so dumb. <laughs> I am watching right now a lion eat a gazelle. This is <laughs> just like so one-sided. Oh, Leroy. Oh. We, we matched up against that. I don't think times. he plays that, you yeah. Think, you think Leroy is like the new face hunter? Oh. That's... Leroy's fine. Some people play it. Even over I saw Arcane that at rank nine on the ladder this morning. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, in tournaments, most we players actually lost play because it. of that card. Yeah. No. What were you saying? Uh, most players do play one uh, Leroy, especially in tournament play, mm -hmm. uh, if they're playing Face Hunter. Mm -hmm. Personally, I, <laughs> I don't know if I'm just a hipster, but like I, I had it in the couple tournaments I played when everyone wasn't playing it, and then I took it out just as everyone started adding it. So I don't really know what's better. I don't like it as much because a quick shot being in the deck, um, it kind of rots in your hand sometimes. Yeah. Um, and it was never really better than Arcane Golem in a lot of cases. So 
Yeah, Arcane Golem's a card well, that seems like you don't want to play two of it, but then every time you just like slam it turn three or just play it, I always get eight damage off of it, almost always. So the card just keeps overperforming. Don't really want to cut anything, so I like not playing Leroy, but mm -hmm. it's it's not a big deal either way. Doesn't change the deck too much. It it feels like uh, it still has that super combo with with the unleash, but yeah. if you're gonna do that and have double quick shot, it's it's very clunky. Definitely, yeah. yeah. I, I, that was in my head. I was like, okay, some matchups unleash is bad in, so you want to play Leroy to enable it. But then when you actually play the games, it costs like way too much mana to do that combo realistically. Mm -hmm. All right, our next uh, match is going to be Mage versus Mage here. That's a Freeze versus Mech. Yeah. I like the Freeze. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. I think Freeze is definitely favorite. Yeah, all day, every day. Surprised that it's uh, the second Freeze Mage we've seen in this uh, in this. Are tournament. you really? You don't think really? it's that strong? You uh, don't like Freeze Mage right now? We've also seen zero Kazans in every deck. Right. Uh, okay, Freeze Mage is fine, but it's like... You can't you can't beat any deck with Kazan. Period. Let's just start with that. If they play Kazan against you, the game is over. Uh, the other thing is you can beat Priest. We're gonna see a did, lot. Did of you play a Kazan against a Kazan? I did. The reason I yeah. put it in my deck was to beat their Kazans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that could be a teched out way to do this, right? It's a good point. Yeah. Maybe we'll see a Kazan in this Freeze Mage deck. But uh, but you don't. It, it, the thing is, I feel like Tarzan. As soon as I saw Tarzan, I was like, oh my god, this is so good in Freeze Mage. Yeah, maybe it is. I haven't played with it much yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, he he makes the um, the maximum damage like extreme. Yeah. Uh, if you remove one mana cost off all the burn spells, you can Thalnos and do 32. <laughs> Pretty good. It's really good with Antonitis and stuff, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get a lot of fireballs. Yeah, there's always, like, one free slot in Freeze Mage where mm -hmm. you could could have kind of played anything you wanted, a Kona Cold, a Pyroblast, whatever. So, yeah, it fits pretty well in that. Mech is pretty good as well, though. Wow. That is a very early... Uh, yeah, I feel like right Doomsayer there. is invaluable against uh, Mech Mage because of the uh, fact that you know they run Mirror Entity. Right. Yeah. I I, I mean, I, it's that and also that they can just fireball it on six mana. He wants initiative for the Acolyte. This is, like, the reasoning here. Mm. Honestly, it's another decision where I don't think it'll matter much either way because uh, it's just so good for Freeze Mage either way. Let the Playing it there is fine. He didn't have, like, the Frost Nova yet to go with it. He wants to play his cards more aggressively. All right, well, he definitely does have that initiative. We'll have enough mana to do quite a bit next turn. Yeah. I mean, Vortex doesn't want to give his opponent more cards, but playing the 2-2 uh, two, two drops is the most efficient way to use his mana and cards right now. If you play Blast Mage, you lose the battle cry. If you play Spider Tank, you don't use all your mana. You don't really want to freeze the 1-3. He's going to do that. Uh, that's going to give Powder an extra card. It's a big deal. Oh. What to do? Really, uh, Powder, super in control of this game right now. What do you think about Double Ice Barrier? I feel decks are uh, getting more and more spell heavy, and Ice Barrier doesn't make as much of an impact as before. Uh, it might be the case. I, I think two of it's pretty core, because you, you want your scientists to be good throughout the game, mm -hmm. and uh, so you need at least four secrets, I think. And I'm not a big fan of like counter spell or Spellbender. I think the second Ice Barrier is just the best option. Anytime you do get it off scientists, it's just so insane. I mean, so wait, I'm sorry, I kind of like space out there for a second. Do you like um, uh, antique heal bot like one in this? I've seen no, a few that card's people unplayable. That. Yeah, that's a mistake, in, but it doesn't matter in a lot of games. The freeze mage. Okay, uh, unplayable in freeze mage or unplayable overall in freeze mage. Oh, okay, that card card's definitely fine, but this deck okay. does not. <laughs> Glass barrier does the same thing for like less mana. It makes your scientists better. Yeah. It's just like too well, efficient. I think from the people that I've heard slash seen playing it, they just kind of like are like, well, people play Lotheb and then this is more reasonable right. in that situation. Yeah, it's just if you get low from Ice Block and your Ice Block gets popped, uh, Ice Barrier just doesn't do anything. Right, but it's not a control deck. Once the game's to that point, you're like killing them the next turn or, or the game is unwinnable to the point where 8 life is mm -hmm. not going to recover the board for you. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but it, the thing with Freeze Mage is you can literally put like Grimscale Oracles in this deck, like two of them, and the last two cards that you put in your deck are like, they matter so little that it wouldn't change your win percentage by a lot. You can play one mana one ones and still win. You, you, your win percentage would drop like 5% or something. It would almost be irrelevant. 
<laughs> I'm really want to put Grim Scale Oracles in it. That would be awesome. I'm really surprised that uh, Powder decided to set up this Blizzard for so many turns ahead. He had such a clean ping Frostbolt turn. I have no idea why. He yeah, turn uh, like four the way on, he did. on turn four, he, he chose yeah. to attack yeah. the Snow Chugger rather than. Yeah, that was off. really weird. I mean, it turned out okay. I mean, now you can kill them both with Blizzard, I guess. Right. I and mean, he's still over 30 health, so I mean. He was so far ahead that almost anything he did would have worked out fine, but I mean, at this point. I mean, he, he lost initiative, basically. This is the problem, right? Like, he's behind on board now. So, uh... I mean, he's pretty... He's like kind of, like, priced into playing Blizzard here. I don't think he has a choice. I'll play that one. That's the one you want to play. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's a misplay. That's a misplay right there. No, no, no. You want to play the, the first one. Playing the second, like... Because if you attack in a Shredder, you give away that you have a Blizzard, right? So if you play the one you top deck, then he knows you still have one in hand. Okay, okay. Or you could just enrage him by looking very lucky. I also think double Blizzard is pretty rare in Freeze Mage. No, it's pretty core. Most people play it. Well, the usual split is like two Blizzard, one Flame Strike. Because you need the one Flame Strike so that after you Frost Nova a bunch of crap, you have something to actually kill it. Um, the uncommon Freeze cards are like the second Flame Strike and Cold, Cone of Cold. Hmm. Yeah, I've seen a Cone of Cold cut pretty much everywhere for Emperor right now. Right. That was kind of that flexible Grimscale Oracle slot. Okay. At this stage, we're basically going to see the the Freeze Mage just try to stall out the game until he can have high mana turns. And those are going to be so much more powerful for the Freeze Mage than they are for the Mech Mage. God, and he's he's just going to play this Tarzan next turn, I think, right? And that's uh, I think it's a mirror entity in play. He's got to watch out for that. Oh, yeah. God, yeah, that's right. I think we're just going to see a bunch of draw. All right, four damage get you. It all adds up. Oh, boy. <laughs> you have to draw another creature here. Yeah, yeah. You got to get that Doomsayer now, the second Doomsayer. Yeah, uh, one card that a lot of people cut from Freeze Mage is also Loot Hoarder, which is super important for situations like this. So I don't know if that's what uh, Powder did, but definitely might be the case. Well, Doomsayer is the optimal card you want to play into Mirror Entity, but uh, with one down, and with still quite a hefty deck size, uh, we may just not see it this game. Mm. Well, he has his flame strike next turn, anyways, for the full clear. So, yeah, you have to do that. It's all good. He has like a hundred years to actually deal with everything. Right. Yeah. A low thub there would have. Oh, I like up. that. Oh yeah, mad scientist. I think I play the mad scientist here. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. And then they probably just get another mirror entity. <laughs> oh yeah, but who cares? Yeah. It has to be better than that. Yeah. You would think that that would have just been a... I think that was a little bit of a mistake there. What What does... Uh, Why well, wouldn't you really think it? about that? Does this offer any any benefit? I don't think so. To do what? Why wouldn't he play first this to set off the mirror entity so that he and would that kill that? Strike. Yeah, that would be oh, two he, damage less. He didn't even have another secret. Oh, that's right. Yeah, well, that would make too much sense. Well, mm. I guess... The fact that he didn't do it, now there's not Mirror Entity, and now he can Alex Straza. That does, life. in that way, it makes sense. Right. Because otherwise, there would have probably been another Mirror Entity. That, That's a good point. That yeah. seems a little bit too good to be planned, though. Too good? Uh, no, you could plan that. It's not that yeah. I thought of it, so it could be planned by these guys. <laughs> I mean, it worked <laughs> out that way, but... Yeah, no, I think that's why, actually. Well, like, ask how, how else would someone intentionally trade into your... No, oh, no, no, that's no. right. You you wouldn't trade into it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you wouldn't trade into it. I see. Oh, did he just barely not pop him? Oh, okay. Yeah, he's gonna get him. Yeah. What to do? All right, now it's on Mage to not die. What happened this game? Oh, well, Fireball means win. Yep, there you go. Win. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's exactly. What <laughs> Read it. No. Yeah. Vortex Freeze Mage, good deck, right here. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's Hearthstone. Wow. 
All right, so Powder takes that one with the top deck uh, fireball. Let's keep a running tally on how many people top deck fireball in their last their last moment the, of the, life. The one out absolutely need it yeah. or to lose. Let's let's just keep a tally for today. <laughs> okay, that's two. Yeah, there's a uh, very little justice in the world, Artos. <laughs> <laughs> two for two. Actually. All that which happens is justice from nature, or something, as Marcus okay, really says. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, but the uh, the magic play was pretty interesting. Now that you guys talk about it. Yeah, no, I think it was specifically so that he could Alex Straza. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't. He wanted to be able to play a minion for sure. So actually, it makes a lot of sense because he's like, okay, I have ice block up. The extra two damage won't matter. Right. But the thing, the thing about is, playing like, scientist, you just like, trade scientists. Yeah. The, the, the other, like. Um, Vortex like should have seen into that as yeah, well. Yeah, right? yeah, you're right. You're right. Very right. Because he would have set that off a lot earlier, and the fact that he did it afterwards, mm. he was looking for a play mistake from Vortex. Mm. He got okay. it. That makes a lot of sense. All right. But I, I mean, yeah, it's. I think it's fine to play in such a way that you're looking for your opponent to make a mistake because he didn't attack, and that was a big mistake. Mm -hmm. So that's. I think that's a good way to play. You want to. You want to enable your opponent to play poorly. Yep. Now, so far, what we've seen, I think just about every time, if I'm not mistaken, that the um, the losing player has kept their deck. Is this is this a general practice in Conquest? Mode? Um, yeah, because if it gets sweeped, you might as well not reveal all your lists. Okay. And uh, usually, a common strategy is to play your weakest deck first, so that you have the most chances to get the good matchup. Oh, okay. Um, so you just kind of want to keep playing it. Some pretty strong Druid play coming out from Powder here. Let's yeah. go strong turn two and three. Yeah. With possible dead draws coming up. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I, am ready. I like this clockwork play. There's some options on how to sequence this hand from Mage, but that one's what? definitely solid. Oh, all right. Yeah, I do like that. And the two one is a lot stronger on turn two than it is on uh, turn three. Mm -hmm. The past couple times I played against Mech Mage in a tournament, I don't think my opponent had uh, cards left in hand on turn three. So this is <laughs> pretty fortunate for Powder. I think this is. I think this actually is a really good start. Still, yeah, yeah. It, it absolutely is. Mech Mage is a deck that to begin with is. Barely favored against Druid, just because Mirror Entity is so strong against them. You have so many ways to get ahead on board early. That's definitely oh one of his better draws. Mirror yeah. Entity is so good in this matchup, I just keep it as a three drop. Because it's much better than like Spider Tank or Harvest Golem. And here he is with five mana. <laughs> yeah. Do you play the shade or do you if give you him something? If you play bigger? the Druid, you have to play it in charge and probably kill the Chugga. Right, but then you're you're frozen the turn after, so... Yeah, but if you, if you make him commit to two pings, it's not that bad. It's only really bad if he gets a good Arc Mage, or Blast Mage. Right, it's true. Which, I mean, it is a uh, Mech Mage deck, so probably that will happen. Well, they, they need a Mech, then the Blast Mage yeah, to turn out. It's, it's actually quite unlikely, I think. I think Shade is fine. You gotta start playing the test dummy, man. I'll just Shade Wild Girl. Get him. <laughs> He's going to go with Claw. Maybe. Anyone, anytime someone holds the card that far out, they, they've already chosen their mind. That's I actually something I've noticed commentating Hearthstone. It's like almost every single time. Oh, and he actually just trades it in like that. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Right. That, that might actually just be better. I mean, okay. you're going to play a bunch of 3-3s three next turn, so you can kill the Snow uh, Chugger. Okay. Harrison uh -oh. Jones. Maybe we'll see Blinktron come out at some point. That guy will get some value. <laughs> Unless he's playing a very old version with Unstable Portal, I don't think we're going to be seeing Blinktron. That card's good in that deck, man. Is it? You put him in Snow Chugger Lockdown, and they just... <laughs> it just farms. <laughs> That's really funny. Well, the Major's at two life if he draws a uh, Force of Nature. That's true. It's not lethal, though. No. If he wild growths and draws a... Well, what if he wild growths and draws, like, a swipe? 
and then draws a force of nature. Game over. That'll be interesting. Wow. That'd be consistent with uh, the tournament so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that, that, that'll work. That card's probably not going to die. Well, no it does get copied and give the mage lethal, though, by the look of it. Oh, does it? I didn't, I didn't see. So, there isn't... It does give the mage lethal with fireball. There isn't really a clean, uh, clean play here for Druid. Hmm. You're, you're kind of, you feel like you have to trade into this 3-2 for one, but doing that's definitely not, uh, not the best. Piloted Shredder in the middle, definitely a good play. I was, uh, messing that up in my match a lot and kind of, like, the second after I would play it without paying attention to placement, I'd feel bad. Yeah, with the, uh, with the possible Flame Tongue coming out. Right, yeah, or Direwolf. Well, um... If he, for some reason, plays Cone of Cold, this is actually better, so there. I think the game's going to be passed away here. Let's see. So it's eight. Like, oh God. Oh, it's pretty lethal. No attacks are made. Yeah, he needs to uh, get a Doomsayer here. He needs to decide if he can even beat Fireball at this point. I think he might just have to trade both Shredders. Yeah. Ah, that's not it. Come on. Other Shredder. Oh. oh, that is not what you want to see. That is one of my favorite new cards, too. Oh, man. Well, that's lethal. The safest play would have been just to not play the Shredder at all and um, just get rid of the mechs, if anything. Like, you'd play Harrison over Shredder. Yeah, but you'd have to... You can't get rid of the other mech because you gave it the plus one armor. Oh, and you were frozen for the turn yeah. before? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, so that was, like, pretty rough. That was a really good plus one armor, actually. All right, so both the mage decks going to pick up their wins for their respective players. Yep. Strong class. Certainly is. Better than Shaman, at yeah. least. Before GBG, mage was really, really underplayed. It was almost at the point where even Freeze Mage was dead. Right. Yeah. yeah. Nice so, to see it making a resurgence. Definitely one of my favorite decks to play, mm -hmm. and uh, or classes to play. It's so flexible. Mm. It was kind of weird before. Like it, it never really seemed bad. It was just like it had so many solid cards, but it was nothing like combo overpowered or anything and constructed. Mm. Like you look at arena, each of the cards by themselves would be insane. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. Yeah, when you put it's, them together, yeah, you it's kind of like the new shaman card, the, like the, the, the huge fire elemental creature. Right. Yeah. I just look at that in war elemental. It's like, well, mage and war elemental when it sucked, it didn't really do anything for it. No. Yeah. No. Hmm. Interesting to see how uh, how the deck shift how Definitely. the deck shift happens. We'll see if uh, I'm excited for dragon Paladin, man. All the wings yeah. are out. That's gonna. It will 100% be good. That mm -hmm. that's not a question. The question yeah. is like. How does it affect the metagame? Because what's good against it? Because that those are decks that are also going to start seeing more play. Yeah, Dragon Paladin would be good. Yeah, it's a quality combo there. Dragons put your dragons out. Yeah, easy peasy. I think the best deck will be Rogue. Oh, there you go, Kazan yeah. Mystic, the first one. Yeah, is yeah. is it a keeper? Or is it Wild Growth? Uh, uh, yeah. It's a Kazan Mystic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like. I mean, I would keep it just because the average card is probably going to be worse. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, it's not going to be played turn three. Did he mull it and redraw it? No, no. <laughs> That's, uh, that same animation happened earlier, and I got really confused because mm -hmm. it looked like actually against you, I think, that Savitz had mulliganed a war axe and a... And a cruel task against Yeah, Hunter. but it's just like a weird animation. Like, there's no way he did that. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty good curve, though. Coin, coin Wild Growth into Shades. Super strong here. We're going to see another face hunter, so... Double L is pretty bad, though. Yeah, not having a two-drop or a one-drop really sucks. Mm -hmm. These are the games you lose and, with Hunter. And the thing is, that Shredder is already silenced, that Shredder in his hand. So, yeah, yeah it wasn't that useful. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Card's working as intended. You don't even want that against Druid most of the time because the Keeper of the Grove, but in this case, the Druid work, doesn't yeah. have it, so... I think the... the the uh, shredder, yeah, the shredder is a little bit better for developing the board. I think trading is right too. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, if, if you, he doesn't if you play that, you have to trade. Yeah. If he doesn't run into Huffer, it's like already eight, and then you, 
what is your next turn? Look at your hand. You're going to have five mana. You just play the Sludge Belcher. Let yeah. this guy do anything he wants. Most of this game is about the Hunter just getting a crazy border off the start. Now, the Druid's still losing, but um, it's uh, this is basically the turning point because the Hunter really had very bad openers. Yep. Leopard Gnome's still a useful pickup, though. Gives him a way to fill out his curve here, and the game is not over. Like, Hunter can easily win. Those two yeah. Owls are just going to make the Belcher pretty irrelevant, and... Uh, he could easily draw enough direct damage off the top and just have the time to kill the druid. Without scientists or naturally drawn secrets, that Kezin's going to be pretty useless. There's really only the Ancient Allure to slow the druid down. There's two kill commands. Those I think you have to use one. Hit hard. I agree with you, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> like, you really want a hero power. Yeah. But you, you're right. Oh. You do have to use one. This crash for some reason. I guess we're only going to see one hand. The important one. The one with decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Oh, he's going decided with that. Oh, that's what I was thinking. Were yeah, you thinking you, to kill the, you have the second the silence? No, or? I was trying I was trying to my delivery is bad. I was trying to be sarcastic and make okay. some sort of uh, okay. hunter going face thing, <laughs> but I didn't really Okay, hold on. Mistakes are made. I'm supposed to be on All right. okay. All right. Hunter's I mean, a pretty good deck. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, what man. seals it here? Uh, nothing by itself. Huffer. Oh, yeah, Huffer does. No, it doesn't. Huffer's one off. Everything is one off. I think he's going to respect the Kazan. I think he just take the Golem damage right now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, golden damage, seven next turn, clean up, easy peasy. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty simple. And all, all right. the mana works out better that way anyways. So now we're going to see the lore come down and heal. And uh, see if Hunter can draw out of this. I think Unleash is... No, Unleash won't be lethal. It's mana off. I'm actually thinking maybe... No, Lothib's too crazy. You have to heal. You have to heal. Right. Uh, well, you can always loath up the next turn. You can always top tick Savage Roar and win anyway. Yeah, that's true. Uh, it's a decent draw. And some damage. That's all I needed. Is it? Don't think so. <laughs> I think you needed a little bit more than that. Well, it's not lethal this turn, but you needed like to not draw... Leper gnome or abusive, or you need like a tr something with charge basically, or a weapon. Does he play the uh, trap? Yeah, he does. Okay. Kazam might be popping out. Kazam with up. Yep, it's definitely going to hurt him because it's going to mean the druid's mean to any. Uh, well, it's not, he's not really immune to charge damage. He still has Glaive Zuka to hit him. And yeah, that's true. That's explosive. true. Explosive. Yeah. Really considering his plays here. I don't think there's anything to consider, though. No, it's I, Kaz I, and Lothab. That's all he can do. I mean, I. What else could he be thinking of here? Like uh, possibly he just counting to see if he needs to use his hero power, but it doesn't seem reasonable. Right. He's probably thinking like, yeah, because any charge damage would actually kill him. There's really not much thing. There's three cards in hand. He's dead. Yeah. Well, Hunter takes it. No one drop, no two drop. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Kill command is pretty strong. Oh, and he actually... Okay. That's kind of interesting. He does actually stay alive with that, I believe. No, he doesn't. Oh, wait. Ew. Yeah, the Lotheb is the important part. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> Oh, yeah. He's going to win the game. Well, is he? Because uh, you just you just kill command. Or no, you quick shot. It doesn't matter. You, you play one of them, so your explosive is like threatening lethal. No, but then you, you still have lose lethal. to the Kazan. You have lethal. You Kazan and then force of nature. No, no, I understand. But he doesn't know about the Kazan. Yeah, so yeah. he's quick shotting now to like... I see. In theory, stop the Druid from attacking. 
just enough creature slots. He's pissed. Wow. <laughs> wow. Is he pissed? He's not happy. Yeah. That, that was looked, awesome. That looked really bad for Hunter, and then it looked really good for Hunter, and then Zon Mystic, keep it in, in opening hand, worked out. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually really impressed by that. Yeah. That was a, that was a, that was a good game. I, I feel like our enthusiasm is not uh, not adequate for how <laughs> yeah it was how it ridiculous was that crazy. comeback had to be right yeah yeah, yeah Lothab made it so he had one mana off yeah not attack to push Lothab lethal next yeah well I guess he's counting because I kind of discounted like oh he must be counting for to see if he needs to use his hero power and I just kind of looked at the hand I'm like nah oh. it, this doesn't matter that's so super well played there. from the druid too yeah oh yeah. sets over it, is it hey. what that, that didn't you just win two games? I won three games. Good job. Okay. I don't know how that happened. Yeah. Like, we all thought that he won there two was, games. There was a mage win. There was, was a druid win. Up. I won with the warrior first and the mage. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That yeah, hunter okay, got okay, dunked okay. twice. Yeah, yeah. We were just really confused because it's like a hunter losing twice is just really yeah, unusual anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was really well played in that druid game. It's a crazy... Crazy that was back. really crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The low I, I, that play was. I, I do think I misplayed though, when I hero powered instead of playing the fourth, the shredder, which would have given me lethal one turn earlier. Right. Um, okay. But, I can see that. I mean, Lothar was my only out in the end, so mm -hmm. I was just hoping he only had spells. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it, it, it was cool. Yeah, he, he had he had a kill command. He had a quick shot. He yeah. had a beast. Yeah. And everything was one mana or one damage too le too little. Yeah. So it, it couldn't have been more perfect. Like we were looking at the hand and we we're like, yeah, there's there's no way that the druid can do this. And then, oh, oh, I guess he won. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> so uh, what were you thinking going into the just this tournament, like the group stages and all that? What made you choose the decks that you brought? Um, I was kind of looking at our group a little bit. Um, I was expecting. I was expecting Rogue uh, from Reynad and Savitz, um, which my lineup is pretty good against Rogue. I was expecting a lot of Face Hunter, which is also pretty good against. It's just basically worked out which decks are the best and so on. Just I went with these. No. Right. Okay. Easy as that. You you have to go against uh, Savitz next. Uh, what do you think about your matchup now that you've seen the decks he's actually brought? I haven't really think thought about it, but I'm pretty scared of the Agro Paladin. I mean, it's not something I've played against a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so you've never seen a 5 8 cheese before? No, I mean, I just don't play that. I'm, okay. I'm not that kind of guy. <laughs> what about the, the double 3 4 Divine Shield taunt for two mana? <laughs> that was pretty good. That was okay. pretty good. I hope that, that doesn't happen value. against me. Yeah, it's me. good value. Did you know that if Hobgoblin lives for like five turns, you're probably going to lose that game? Yeah, I'm fact. probably. Not, that's probably what's going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Sick. All right, so I think it is you versus Savitz next, or is it the loser match? No idea. No idea? Okay. Well, we'll figure that out pretty soon. Congratulations, Thanks. Powder. Thank you. Uh, sorry that we're jobbers that somehow thought that it was actually not the last game It's yet. okay. The, the cue is someone shows up on the bench yeah. and then like, yeah. oh, congratulations. <laughs> like, oh, Three yeah. wins. Uh, oh, God. I think we, we just don't question them anymore. Or something. Yeah. Like, we, we, just, we just make ourselves look bad. That's really all there is. That's fine. I'm fine yeah, with I that. Whatever. Fine. We're casters. Uh, okay, so thank you very much, Raynad. Um, best of luck in your next match. I'm not sure if you're actually playing next or not, but we'll figure that out in just a moment. Yep. And guys, we'll be back after a quick little commercial break, so don't go too far. <laughs>